Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, earlier this year, I attended the Aptus Accelerate event in sunny San Francisco for the second year. Now, for those of you that don't know or haven't heard any of the previous interviews, Aptus is a Silicon Valley-based global provider of Aptus Omni, which is essentially a middle office platform that allows enterprises to automate and optimise their most critical revenue and commercial relationship management processes. And Aptus is also powered by the most advanced technologies from Salesforce, Microsoft and IBM, to name but a few. And analysts have ranked Aptus as the global gold standard for quote-to-cash and contract lifecycle management solutions. And Aptus's other innovations include Max, the company's applied artificial intelligence that enables enterprises to achieve superior business outcomes. From those last two Aptus Accelerate events that I have attended, I returned with more than a few crazy and bizarre stories, such as meeting David Blaine, who just seemed to stare at me quite vacantly as I told him I loved his work. (laughs) And I also got to interview the CEO at the time, Kirk Crapp, in a movie-style trailer, only in California, right? So in May, Aptus was a tech unicorn valued north of a billion dollars. And I spoke to the CEO, Kirk Crapp, about plans to take the company public, and he also gave a 25-minute keynote speech, which started with Charles Darwin and ended with a new product announcement. And then there was a keynote chat with Richard Branson. But since my trip, things have changed at Aptus. They now have a new CEO, and I felt it was time that I caught up with him and learned more about his vision for Aptus, what direction he wants to take them, when he recently flew into London. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to London here in the UK so we can speak with David Murphy, Executive Chairman and new CEO of Aptus. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, hi, I'm uh, David Murphy. I'm the uh, Executive Chairman and CEO at Aptus. Uh, and uh, we are a company that is the leader in the middle office uh, space, uh, developing technologies for quote to cash. It's great to have you on the show today, David, because I did attend and cover the Aptus Accelerate event in San Francisco earlier this year. And I spoke to Kirk Crap about his vision to eventually go public. And I also enjoyed his unique keynote. But from the outside looking in, it did seem that he was the face and voice of the company. But then within a few months, he seemed to disappear. A few rumours quickly began spreading online after uh, the Tom Bravo completed a majority investment in Aptus, followed by your arrival. So just to set the record straight, can you maybe fill in a few of the missing blanks and advise what's been happening at Aptus since this year's Accelerate event? Yeah, so uh, you know, I am a uh, operating partner at uh, Tama Bravo and have been involved uh, since uh, very much earlier in the year on a set of work that then led up to, as you uh, just uh, spoke to, the uh, ownership of uh, Tama Bravo, which uh, closed in uh, early October. Uh, over the period between Accelerate and early October, uh, Kirk left the company uh, under the kind of prior uh, board and leadership, and I had the opportunity, uh, more or less on day one, to uh, step into the uh, senior leadership role. We have uh, been very busy uh, bringing a set of additional uh, leadership uh, into the business. So over the time period, uh, uh, chief financial officer, chief people officer, soon to be announced a uh, chief legal officer, really trying to kind of build out the uh, leadership team, uh, you know, ultimately on the view that uh, the acquisition by Tom Bravo of Aptis is an opportunity to take what was Kirk's vision and the execution the company had had uh, really to the next level. What I mean by that is uh, we've tended to buy uh, platform companies and drive uh, both growth and operational excellence into them and believe that Aptus can truly be the uh, category winner, the category leader in the middle office space. 
Excellent. Now, as a tech show, I don't want to dwell too much on the past of Aptus, but more about what your new vision is and where you're going to be directing the company. So can you share with me your vision for Aptus and also what this means for businesses and indeed your clients? One of the things that is uh, happening and actually accelerating is that many companies today are reimagining how they want to conduct business with their own customers. And the advent of more uh, agile uh, kind of approaches that might be offering uh, products as a service, which we very often see now in the consumer space, or uh, subscription uh, purchases, bundling of uh, services and products in unique ways, has put uh, uh, the need for reimagining the business operation of our customers at the uh, forefront. You often hear those customers talk about it in terms of their own business transformation, and the backbone of that business transformation tends to be uh, how you interact, uh, not in the selling with customers, but how you configure, quote, order, process, provide self-service, give the flexibility and the agility to the customer that they want and how they conduct business with you. Uh, Aptus is uh, the uh, technology transformation uh, leader in doing that, along with the customer in reimagining how they want to run their process and how people uh, might work differently. I think we're at the early stages of a uh, market-wide set of uh, advances and frankly personally feel like what we all now enjoy as consumers uh, in the way that we can use mobile uh, technologies and, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, services like Uber and Airbnb, lots of other examples uh, that have been created that uh, in the business-to-business market, uh, exactly the same uh, phenomena is uh, beginning to go on. And, you know, I'm proud to be a part of uh, Aptus at this stage because we've been uh, the market leader in driving the technology excellence that's required to be able to do these kinds of things. Now, I recently read how you guys are also planning to address the massive market opportunity between ERP and CRM systems. How can you expand on these plans and, what, and why you're seizing this opportunity? We uh, call that uh, the uh, middle office, the intelligent middle office category. And the reason that we do is exactly for what you just started to describe, which is many companies have spent over the last 20 years great effort on the uh, back office ERP, enterprise resource planning, financial kind of back office uh, arena. And over the last decade, we've seen great advances in the front office in CRM, sales, and uh, optimization of uh, selling activities. In between has traditionally been a very complex space that uh, has either been primarily homegrown. I was with that customer last week, a $100 billion uh, business. They've got a, over 100 different uh, environments that they run in what is this middle office. They dramatically want to both reduce that complexity, but they want to make it intelligent. They want to make it agile and ultimately take advantage of uh, modernization in, in, in a way, by bridging between the front and back office, it helps them redesign the uh, entire business model. And that is the part that we, from the early days, have been focused on. And now we see accelerating as the middle office matures as a category and uh, ultimately as the enabler for the kind of business transformation that companies want to do. So you've shared your vision with me today and also your plans on how you're going to bring that vision to life. But can you also tell me more about how Tomo Bravo's investment in the company is actually going to aid this vision too? In the, in the uh, introduction, uh, you know, I talked about uh, the decision that we took to invest in the business. And I mean, ultimately, one of the most interesting things, and I've been an operating partner now for the last three years and have uh, you know, been involved with Tomo Bravo for eight, is the private capital markets are an extraordinarily uh, important and now deep vehicle for being able to build out a company like Aptis. What I mean by that is 
the work that we want to do, the investment that we want to do, instead of at this going public, uh, today you can realize an acceleration, I think more quickly than in the public markets by accessing private capital. The nice thing with Tama Bravo is you're both accessing capital, but also operational excellence. It's the reason that I'm involved with the business. It's the reason that a group of uh, other senior operating executives affiliated with Tama Bravo are, are involved in the business. But I think we will compress the time that the company would otherwise take to become truly a leader operationally and drive a profitable growth model. And at the same time, if in the future, which I believe we will, we want to do acquisitions, we want to do partnerships that require direct investment. We now have a, uh, an owner, so to speak, that is in a position to deploy that incremental capital. And my track record with them has been uh, terrific in this regard. So I think the, you know, the why Tomo Bravo, uh, if I'm at this, uh, looking at it is, it's, it is an important acceleration of the company's uh, build out and at a time that's important because we need to move purposely but quickly to really uh, uh, you know, ensure the kind of leadership position that's the potential of what Aptis is. Now, Aptis has built a reputation for being the industry's first and only, as far as I'm aware, intelligent middle office platform. And the platform is also available across Salesforce, Azure, IBM Cloud, and it all powers your industry-leading quote-to-cash contract management, digital commerce, and supply relationship management solutions out there. So I've got to ask, I mean, is that still very much at the heart of what you're doing, along with, of course, the AI assistant called Max? You know, I, I think you uh, summarized in a uh, you know, very elegant way the uh, kind of core assets, the core uh, leadership that the company's been about. And the only thing that I would add to it is I believe the ability to operate across uh, the uh, different environments, a multi-cloud uh, capability uh, where we can then uh, take certain uh, needs and do them on whichever platform is going to be both the most uh, scalable and the most cost effective for the customer, that ability is uh, important. So I don't think of this as a static uh, environment anymore, but one where we can truly take a more brokering uh, approach with our customers to optimize uh, for them the experience and the uh, cost of running technology. And from your own personal point of view, for, especially for other business leaders listening to our conversation today, you've risen to the challenge of walking into a strong, innovative company with a solid product foundation and a technology backbone. So what are your biggest challenges and equally opportunities of being a new CEO at a tech company, but wanting to walk in there and just take it to the next level? There's a couple of areas that uh, I've spent a great deal of time on. The first one is, if you think about the next doubling and the doubling after that of a business like Aptis, now these are uh, talent-based uh, companies. So we only win if we do a great job of attracting, retaining, developing, and ultimately having the best talent uh, of anyone in the intelligent middle office. Uh, there is no question a war for talent in the technology arena. And it's important uh, as a CEO for me to both spend time on the culture and the uh, way in which people then have a great experience uh, and a career at Aptis, but it's also the differentiation of how I get additional talent in, which I need over time. You have to do that as a global uh, player today. So I can't rely on any single location to uh, both have the depth and the uh, breadth of talent that I need. So that whole calculus, I think, for any CEO trying to scale a business out is very different uh, than it was uh, even a decade ago. The uh, second thing that I would say is it's important that we help lead the customer through their journey. Uh, we are a product company. We deliver our products uh, through a kind of cloud uh, SaaS service. But ultimately, we're a technology provider. We have to be able to help the customer think about uh, their journey, 
the maturity of where their starting point is, the people changes they need to make, the business uh, changes that they need to make in a collaborative way. And I think one of the demands on technology companies more and more is to be a partner uh, in providing those insights because ultimately the technology by itself, you know, in a way, if you think about a customer that re-implements their existing business practices on a new environment, they don't get the transformation that they want. If I help them understand what business changes they need to make in conjunction, then uh, they can have a brilliant outcome and uh, I can deliver them an ROI that is uh, along the lines of the kind of disruption they're looking for. So to me, it's those two things. It's a uh, beyond technology thought leadership and it's a leadership around the uh, war for talent. Both are important and both are in addition to uh, just running a good technology business. It has been a year of big changes over there at Aptus. Uh, but even so, you have recently been featured in Gartner's Magic Quadrant again. I mean, this must make you feel incredibly proud that you are heading in the right direction. No, it's a, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, um, areas that I think you have to celebrate both the leadership that the company has forged over a long period of time and the acknowledgement that even during a year of change, a year of uh, new ownership, change in leadership, uh, ultimately uh, the uh, attribution that Gartner has given and that others do, the accolades there, we feel very proud of. And it uh, plays well both uh, externally as you would expect, but it's also something that as you're going through change, uh, the uh, people in Aptis uh, can celebrate internally which is an important uh, area because with change comes, you know, kind of disruption and the ability to have that validation externally gives you confidence that we uh, continue to be on the right path. So everything seems to be falling into place right now. So I've got to ask again, I mean, what kind of feedback have you received from your clients during this year of big changes? And also, how do you ensure that you bring them along for the journey with you? Customers, for the most part, want, uh, and I think we do as people, you uh, enjoy stability. Yeah. So there's a apprehension and then an excitement uh, in the customer base when we have the discussion that we just had, and I do it around their agenda and what we can now do, Aptis can do, and we can do together. So there, there is a kind of reorientation to a kind of positive view. But a part of my job is to assure and then deliver the kind of stability and uh, ultimately uh, the outcomes that the customer seeks. These are mission critical operations. We're operating the uh, transactional environments that uh, are at the heart of uh, business. So any disruption that uh, I create is quickly uh, a disruption in our customer's business. And again, I would say that uh, the discussions have been terrific. The optimism is terrific. And uh, they uh, then expect that, uh, you know, as a mature executive in the industry, that I'm going to do a good job of delivering on uh, their needs in a reliable way. Well, a huge thank you for coming on and joining me today. Before I do let you go, could I just ask that you remind the listeners of where they can find out more information about Aptus, about your vision, your direction, stay up to speed with any further developments, and also how you're just leveraging technology to make it easier for them to do business? Yep, that would be at uh, www.aptus.com, and it's uh, A-P-T-T-U-S for anyone that uh, would appreciate the spelling. Uh, I think you'll find uh, everything that would be a good starting point uh, there and uh, an opportunity to engage with us further uh, as interested. Well, like I said at the beginning of the show, it has been a year of big changes for you all at Aptus, but you do seem to be heading in the right direction. It's fantastic news that you've been featured by Gartner only last month. But I wish you the best for the future and we'll uh, maybe hook up again next year and find out how you're getting on. But a big thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. And uh, for everyone that's out there, And Neil, enjoy the holidays. They do say that the world of tech moves at breakneck speed. And I must admit that I didn't expect to see this many changes at Aptus in under six months. And the company has endured some well-documented problems. But for me, I wanted to hear more about how a business can overcome a turbulent situation and get back on track. So with Aptus being recognised by Gartner, 
and by David appearing to be steering the ship in the right direction with a strong vision for the future, it kind of highlights the importance of good leadership. But if you have any insights, any feedback, any comments, or just want to say hello, or, or even come on to this Daily Tech Podcast, remember, I'm the easiest guy in the world to get hold of. You can email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, and let me know your thoughts. So a big thank you for joining me again today. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow, where I'll have another guest waiting to speak with us. And for those of you that are following my daily Christmas movie marathon, Kurt Russell was good but cheesy in the Netflix Santa movie. So today we're going to bring it down a little bit. I'm going to settle down and watch Gremlins. But enough of my Christmas movie watching habits. All that's left for me to say is a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.